YouTube Live is ready. It's ready. So we're going to start with uh, our SM1 class, lesson 12 angles, but specifically congruent triangles, okay? Well, so let's begin. First thing we're going to talk about is um, what we are going to review in this chapter, okay? So we're going to talk about classification of triangles uh, by the length of sides and by the angle. This is a very simple thing. I'm not going to spend more than one or two minutes doing that. Then we're going to talk a little bit about angle relationships. These ones are really important, and I did not write the last part we had to do today, which is the, the triangle sum theorem, okay? So we need these two things, linear pairs and vertical angles, to help us with the triangle sum theorem, okay? Here we uh, talk about the interior angles of a triangle. We're talking about triangles, so, you know, when I refer to angles, it's angles in a, in a triangle. And there is, a, there is an extension for it. So, you know, when I refer to angles, it's angles in a, in a triangle. And there is, a, there is an extension for it, uh, which is um, exterior angles, okay? Exterior angles in a triangle and i think that's what we're going to the elimination here so give me a second i'm going to okay so the way you classify triangles is by let's talk about the sides first okay classification so with classification by sides we see and you see that these three sides have different lengths in this case we call them uh, scaling right so sometimes we have triangles where these two are congruent. It means they are the same, right? When two sides are congruent, we say this is an isosceles, isosceles triangle. And when the three, oh, sorry, terrible drawing. But when the three of them are the same or have the same lane. I'm gonna try to do it as you know nice as possible. These marks imply that in this case, for example, this segment is congruent or is equal in length uh, to this segment. It, just as an example, if this were eight, then this would also be eight, and this would have a different length, let's say a nine, right? But in this case, these marks are indicating that these three are the same. So let's say, for example, this is five. So this is five and this is five. And with all these like that, when all of them are the same, you know that it's called equilateral, all right? Okay. Again, you can check the book, the electronic version of the book, or you can look it up on the, in, in, on the website, on any website on the internet. This is really simple, the classification of triangles, all right? Now, <clears throat> this is sides, but also we have by the angles you find in the triangle. So let's begin with, look at this triangle. And there is something important here. We indicate with, let me change the color, we indicate with this mark. Right? Can you see the kind of a corner thing? It means that this is a right angle and triangles that have one right angle, they are called right triangles, okay? So this is a right triangle, okay? Right triangle, okay? Also, move on to another one. Um, Similar. Let's let's just first start with this. Look at this. 
all right? All of these angles, and it's not, you, you see that uh, I don't have the same corner, so I cannot say that this is a 90 degree angle. So uh, this angles all over here, this one, this one, and this one, all, all the angles, let's say, let's label this with, uh, we don't need to measure that, but visually, yeah, and this time is one of those few times that I ask you to trust measure of angle B and the measure of angle C. Angles of a triangle are acute, so we can say that this is what we call an acute triangle. Okay? Just like that. Let me try to... Yeah, not much better. Okay? It's an acute triangle. Um, oh, wait a minute, let me check the chat box. We have Daniel's music. Yeah, I know it's really nice music. Please make sure this is what I wrote. And Loraya says, Hi, hi, Loraya, welcome here. Okay, remember, make sure you type your question whenever you need. Okay, so I guess that's so far so good, right? It's a pretty simple explanation. Now, um, now if one of the angles happens. Whoops, yeah. This angle right here is greater than 90 degrees. It means that now this triangle, uh, sorry, this angle, let's say angle B, the measure of this angle B, we know that it's greater than 90 degrees. These other two are acute. But since this one is uh, greater than 90 degrees, it's an obtuse angle, which means that this is an obtuse triangle, okay? There is one more. The, the case when you have an equilateral triangle for the, for, uh, you know, as for the sides, all these sides as well are congruent. All of them are the same. This is what we call equiangular, but there is just one case when you have an equilateral triangle. So, you know, I have no room for uh, writing it, but now you recognize that when you have an equilateral triangle, you, it, it is also an equiangular triangle. And this is the classification. Again, you can refer to section 12.1 to review that, okay? This is the first part of it. Pretty simple, I hope, okay? So exercises you will see either on your of today's lesson. If there are questions, please make sure you type them on the uh, chat box. Let's continue. Uh, now, we're gonna talk about a two very important angle relationships and the basic ones, yeah? Let's see, we have this line, right? And from this line, let's identify a point. Let's say it is point M, all right? So if you, if you, went, if you were to measure the angle here for a straight line, yeah, this would be uh, one hand I'm going to draw it now, this ray, yeah, and that means that now this 180 degree angle that I'm going to erase is now or has now been cut to parts. Okay, I'm going to use here. Look at this. This is the first angle here, and the other one is this one. Okay, so I'm going to label each of these angles. Let's, let's get closer here. So I'm going to uh, say this is angle one and this is angle two, all right? And something we should already conclude is that if I take the measure of angle one and then I add it to the measure of angle two, this sum, no matter what happens here, if it is right here, if the ray is here or here, this is going to be always 180 degrees, all right? And this is what we call a linear, linear pair.
okay? So, in a linear pair, we can say that when 180, uh, uh, you know, a straight angle that has been cut by any ray or segment or line in two different angles, of course, when you add these two, the, the addition or, or the total is 180. We say that it's a linear pair and we say that um, angle one and angle two are supplementary angles, okay? So angles, ones and, uh, angles one and two are supplementary. And the really important thing here is that when you add types of more complex uh, drawings, yeah, or set, uh, you know, uh, uh, or situations, but you need to make sure you recognize it every single time. When you have a straight line, you have 180 degrees, but if that straight line has been cut by any line or ray, then you generate two angles that when added, you get 180, and that is what we call linear pair. And we say that angles one and two in this case. Now, the two lines, this is the first one, and two lines that are intersected, okay? When you intersect two lines, you generate this. Let's say that this intersecting point is called, I don't know, O. And this point O is what we call a vertex. And this vertex, as you can see, when the two lines have been intersected, you can see this. One, oh, you know what? Let me erase this. One, two, three, and four angles, okay? And I'm going to label them. Angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four. And there is something in particular here, okay? I'm going to do this pretty quickly. Oh, give me a sec because my computer is almost out of battery. So I don't want it to turn off. Great. Okay, we're good. So, guys, mm, the thing is, when this happens, let me, when this happens, see that we have one and four are some kind of linear pair and kind of linear pair, but also one and two and also three and four. When you analyze that, but I'm going to skip all the the proof, mathematical proof here, is that eventually we realize two things. Re we realize that angle one and three are the same. It means they're congruent. And the same thing happens with four and two. So the measure of Angle one is congruent to the measure of angle three. All right, and the same thing happens with four and two. The measure of angle four is congruent to, or they're, they're the same, you know? Um, actually, I am not doing it in the very formal way here, but this is what we could say, yeah? They are the same, four and two and one and three. This is what we call vertical vertical angles all right in this case how do we understand that one and three are vertical angles and vertical angles and what happens that they are the same example if uh this if two was 80 you can immediately say that four is also 80 and because one and two are a linear or supplementary, we know that one is 100. And one and angle one is vertical to three. It means that if one is 100, then this one is also 100, and I could solve all this. This is what we try to, you know, explain whenever this situation happens. Questions? Devices we are planning on doing today, okay? So now I'm going to explain to you... Uh, Okay, let me erase here. I'm going to explain what the theorem, uh, the triangle sum theorem is, okay? And this is also some quick thing. If we were in person, things would be a little bit different because I would have you do a bunch of mm, exercise, well, not exercise. I would have a bunch of questions for you to eventually come up with something really important you need to learn today, yeah? And this is it. 
let's say we have is valid for any triangle uh, on the plane, right? This is what we call Euclid plane or Euclid geometry. I'm saying that, you know, on the plane, two dimensions, plane dimensions, this is what happens every time. You have a triangle. We're going to label the vertices of the triangle. This is A, B, and C. Uh, by the way, I'm going to talk about the triangle sum theory. All right. What happens with this triangle and with, again, any triangle is this. Mm, these three angles, A, B, and C, are the interior angles of a triangle, all right? That's something you need to know. Just to label things and then we are on the same page as for the vocabulary. So when you have this triangle, you can say this. Let's say that this segment, A, B, is parallel, and with this I am indicating this is parallel to a new line that I'm going to draw here and that happens to pass through C, okay? It's kind of dashed and this line, this line here and this segment here are parallel. With this, and you know, with, you know, walking you through uh, another things in here, eventually, and you know what, I'm going to skip all this, so you know, this triangle, some theory, theory, no, theorem, tell, right? That for any triangle, for any triangle, yeah? If you add angle A plus angle B plus the, the interior angles of a, uh, a triangle, all right, that the sum of this I am about to do. Let's say that I can extend this right here. And with this, can you see that B is now part of a long line here and you have this angle here, but also we have this angle right here, okay? And this is what I'm about to do. I'm going to label in a different way. This is going to be one is, and I can say that uh, the, you know, the measure of one plus two plus three is, we already know that because of the triangle sum theorem. But now look at four. Four is an exterior, exterior angle of the triangle, right? So when you, you take a look at this angle, and again, I'm going to skip the proof. You can check it on the book. We can say that this angle for, here's the thing, when you have the measure of angle two, and then you add it to the measure of angle three, that equals to the measure of angle four, okay? Which means that if you wanted to find out the measure of angle four and you had this, let's say that it's a, that's what we need to take into account. That's how it works, okay? So far so good, hopefully yes. Let me know if you have any question. You, you can always type it. Uh, on the chat box. All right, let's move on. And yeah, you know, sorry, there's a bunch of information already, you know, uh, studied in the past, but now we are putting all this together to make sense of the new things that we have to do in this chapter, right? Okay, now um, I'm going to, example number two, from, uh, we have this triangle we have this triangle formed by this three and we have point q which is going to be one of the other uh another set another vertex it's located at six three and point p which is located at negative one two right so with this in mind we need to do this we need to classify we need to classify the triangle 
we need to classify triangle O P O P Q, right? Let's let's follow the order of the alphabet or O P Q. We need to classify it uh, by its sides and then this is the first thing i mean part a now part b we need to any ideas box and tell me what i should do to do this first part and then what i should do to do the second part feel free to do it because it will take me a minute to draw this whole thing okay anyway so we have zero zero it's going to be right here it's point o maybe that happens to be uh, oh, what happened here? Okay, no, we're good. Uh, okay, now we're going to locate point P. It has to be here. Negative one, one, and two. So it's somewhere over here. This is point P, located at negative one, two. Okay, and now we're going to locate uh, points uh, Q, which is located at 6, 3. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, and 3 over here, okay? So point, point Q located at 6, 3, okay? And now with that, you can now see... Oh yeah, no problem test, that's okay. All right, so here we are with this. You go like this, you go like this, and then you go like this, all right? Now, th this is our triangle. Uh, we have to determine whether, uh, you know, we have to classify it by its sides, and then we have to determine whether it's a right triangle. And here is when I'm going to ask you, do not trust the visuals, okay? We need to make sure we use the coordinate plane information what does that mean if i want to know uh, a triangle by its sides is either scaling or equilateral or isosceles we need to know exactly what the length of the segments uh is right even though that probably in the visual you say oh this is scaling yeah well now we need to prove that okay we need to verify which means that we need to use the distance formula all right that means that if you want to find out what the distance is from P to O, the horizontal distance is one. So we do two square plus one square, and then we take the square root of it. And this is going to be square root of five. You can keep it like that. Now, what is the distance between O and Q? Well, it's easy because you started here at zero, zero. Oh, wait a minute. And then three up right that's what you get so distance o q is basically six squared plus three squared and then you take square root okay this is going to be 36 and 9 square root of 45 convenient for you i don't have an issue with that so far uh and finally pq so pq we have the distance from this point to this point horizontally you have to go seven units to the right and one unit and there is no way to well maybe 25 square two so it is five root two or in decimals the thing is take a look at this i'm going to summarize it in this small space we have here we have p o measures square root of five now oq measures three square root of five and pq measures five square root of two all of them are different that means because of this and this is the usual process you will need to take because of because of this okay uh, so we have just done part A, right? We're good with that, okay? Now, how can we find a solution for part B? 
we need to determine whether it is a right triangle. Remember something. I'm going to erase all these calculations we have, but I'm going to keep. So with this in mind, we have, well, look at this. If it is a right triangle, remember that it needs to have a, a 90 degree angle in the interior. Evidently, this is not one. Maybe this one, but maybe this one looks like a right, look, looks like a, a, a right angle, right? Probably, so let's say probably it's this. In order to know this, we need to remember that we have this segment and let's extend it to become a line. And then this one, let's extend it to become a line as well. This is something we need to remember from the chapter where we studied a uh, parallel and perpendicular lines, specifically perpendicular lines. Slopes are reciprocal and remember opposite. We can confirm that, that they are perpendicular, meaning that this is a right angle and it means that this is going to be a, um, an angle, uh, sorry, a right triangle, okay? So we just need to confirm what those um, slopes are. The slope for this, can you see that I go, if you go from this point to this point, you go one to the right and two down, yeah? So for uh, PQ, for the line PQ, PO, sorry, the slope is one to the right and two down. So it means this, ah, I'm sorry, made a mistake here. That should be negative two over one, okay? And now for this line that, you know, you can, you can have these two points, OQ, in this case, you go six to the right and three up. So the slope is this, uh, three up and six to the right. If I simplify this, this is going to be one half. And now if we compared the, um, the values of the slopes, sorry, let me move this here, yeah. If we compare these two values, can you see that we have a, a negative two over one in front of a one over two? Can you see that they are opposite because this is negative and this is positive and you have switched the denominator and the numerator. It means that a, we have found a perpendic perpendicular lines and if these two are perpendicular, this angle is a 90 degree angle. So it means that we can say that, are, is this a right triangle? So yes, it's a right triangle, right? Opposite, okay? I have just given you information necessary for you to solve uh, all this that you will see either on the quiz or on the uh, on Big Ideas Math. Of course, there will be some questions. Remember to send me an email in case that you are you know stuck on some exercise, and we can kind of figure it out. All right. I don't know if you have questions. If you don't have questions, I'm going to stay here for one or two more minutes, and then that's gonna be it. All right, so remember, if you have any issue with anything, you can send me an email. I'm going to type it here, just in case you don't remember. Anyway, you can just check, you can check, uh, oh, wait a minute, there's an issue here. You can check Canvas anytime, so that's it. All right, that's it, guys. 
So good to have you here. Take care. Other issue, remember, send me an email. Okay. Don't go. Okay, just as you saw, I said, wow, it looks like it's a right triangle, like a right angle. Okay, we need to prove that by checking uh, whether those slopes are uh, perpendicular. Yeah, satisfying the two conditions. But yeah, 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 but no, that's totally fine. And remember, send me an email for whatever you know issue you might find. You will find some kind of complex things, but you know, send me an email and I'll, I'll be helping you. Okay, I'm gonna be here. All right. So see you guys. Take care. Okay. Enjoy your day. Bye bye. Okay. We're finishing here as well.